Welcome to Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, where the defending national champion Florida State Seminoles face Georgia Tech. FSU comes into this game ranked number two in the country, but the upset-minded Yellow Jackets are looking to ambush the Seminoles. Let's now join commentators Brent Musburger and Gary Danielson for this ACC showdown here on ESPN Classic. Matt Munyon, who has lost his job as the field goal specialist, still will handle the kicking off chores for Bowden tonight. A little bit of a longer leg. Crowd on its feet in Atlanta. And we are underway. They'll let Campbell come out. Right return slips the first tackle, but not the next five. And so George Gotzi, who grew up south of Tallahassee and Tampa, played at Tampa Jesuit High School, coming out for his first series. We ask him what he hopes to accomplish against the Knowles on this first series. No, I just have to make the right reads as far as the running game and get our offense alignment in the best situation. I think, you know, passing has to come, you know, take the short routes until they give you the deep one. So the first play from scrimmage of the game. You can just imagine young Godzi, nicknamed Goose, under center here against the Knowles as a starter for the first time. Play fake going deep on first down. And it'll be second down and 10 as Ty Cody drops back deep defensively for the Knowles. Now let's check the Chili's. Starting lineup, this offensive line with three new starters. They'll be under fire today. Blake Schmidgall and Bennett will have to stand tall against this unit. Kelly Campbell, we saw him return the kickoff. John Myers helped bail him out against Central Florida with a big third and 18 situation that he turned into a 27 yard game. Joe Burns, the tailback, back from an injury this year. Georgia Tech features a bunch of different formations with Ross Mitchell who moved from linebacker to fullback leading the way and a penalty flag thrown by the side judge on second down and 10. Goes against Florida State. Referee is Jimmy Knight out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Defense five yards, repeat second down. Sean Gregory now will work with Burns, so they will have both tailbacks and normally. This means that Georgia Tech will flare one to the sideline. Now a late substitution. They bring Gregory back out to the side. Second down and five. On a draw play, Burns is well short of the first down. Now our Chili's starting lineup. And you all know the story. They lost both their fine tackles, but the youngsters, Emmanuel and Womble, did very good in that win over Brigham Young. Jamal Reynolds is the All-American. Outstanding linebackers. Allen, Jennings, and Polly, they do a sensational job. Thomas Gibson, Hope, and Cody in that backfield. We saw Ty Cody make a big play already in this game. And now we come up with third and three, and Mickey Andrews signaling in the defense. He is a trip over there on the sideline, folks. One of the more animated defensive coaches in the country. Godsey under pressure gets it off for a first down, and that was great poise, Gary. Absolutely, because when you have Jamal Reynolds, defensive end was all over. Let's take a look at what Georgia Tech has to do in this game to make this thing a football game. First of all, they have to run the ball enough. I don't know if that's English, but that's what they have to do, and I don't know how much they have to run it, but they have to run it a little, and they have to challenge the bump and run that Florida State will employ the whole game. For the FFSU defense, they're a better team, so make Georgia Tech earn every yard. No cheapies. Will Glover, another of the youngsters from Tampa Jesuit, caught that first down pass from Gotsey. Now the option look. Here's the pitch, and it is Gregory carrying to the 45-yard line on first down. And Friedgen 
the offensive coordinator told us he wanted to give him some option looks. Yes, and, and, and Goose is not going to run the option the way Joe Hamilton ran it, but you have to run it to simplify the defenses for Florida State. Ralph Region has a real philosophy about football. Before you can win a game, you have to prevent from losing a game, and that's where he is right now. He's going to feel how good Gatsy can play early in this game and then open up the offense. Second down. And comes back with Gregory. Short of the first down again. Friedgen was the assistant coach of the year. Won the Frank Broyles award a year ago. For five years, he was the offensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers. And you might recall one year, the Chargers made it all the way to the Super Bowl under his direction of the offense for Bobby Ross. And of course, there they ran into the juggernaut, Steve Young and the San Francisco 49ers down in Miami. We have a third and three. on a pitch and the Knowles eat it up with a great defensive play by Polly. Thomas Polly did not start the opening game still recuperating and getting 100% from that knee injury he suffered in the national championship game. Remember that Brandy he looks 100% to me right now and a punch situation already arises in the football game. The tech. Dan Dyke lost his job for one game for uh, humor <laughs> that wound up being in subordination. <laughs> the man who didn't think it was funny is the head coach, George O'Leary. Hangs his first punt. Antoine Bolden. Back to return, looking for a war. Good coverage. Ball was coming loose, but he was down. And here's what Chris Winkie hopes to accomplish on the Knowles' first series. My goal uh, in my speech to the offense is uh, settle for nothing less than a touchdown right here. So here we go. <laughs> it's the same time. That's easy. And without a huddle, Wiki brings the first play in. They line him up in the shotgun as he eyes the defense. The offensive line gives him lots of time, and he completes, and it's over on the far side, Marvin Minnis, who had a career day against BYU, comes up with the first reception and a first down for Florida State. From the 36, Travis Miner. Now our Chili's starting lineup, and this is a big offensive line, could be a huge factor here tonight. They average 308 pounds. Carlos Thomas switches to the other side because of Brett Williams' injury. Sharon Dorsey will go at the other tackle. Now second down and 10 for the Knowles. Duhart checks the count with Ricky. And out of bounds, it is Menace again. He has caught both completions here. And of course, with Peter Warwick gone, Ron Dugan gone, Lavernius Cole's gone, there is still talent. The wide receiver spot. William McRae returns, and he's someone to keep an eye on. The fullback spot will be lined up in front of Travis Miner, and they'll, they'll run the big fella from time to time. And one of the few times you'll see Florida State huddle is in this situation right here, third and short. Marcus Outson comes in a lot of times in this situation. Here he comes on the field now. He will be the quarterback. An option specialist on third down and one. Outson trying to get it. It is going to be very close. I'm not sure he got it, Gary. I really couldn't tell. We saw that in the national championship game. Remember, they ran the pitch sweep in that situation. Didn't get it. Fourth and less than a yard. I believe Bobby will, uh, he has an outstanding punter in Keith Caprell. But Winky will come back here on fourth and one. Ooh, how about this? In the early going. Here's a moment for you. They like to run the toss sweep in this situation. Instead, it is the big fullback first down, Florida State. William McRae from Jacksonville against this defense. Now, remember, they're not nearly as big in that front. And O'Leary is very hopeful that quickness can do the job here. 
And you can see they've given away a lot of weight, 25 pounds per man. Try to run Travis Minor into a hole, crosses midfield to the 48-yard line, and a penalty flag with Matt Miller as linebacker, missing all of last year because of an injury. And this defensive backfield, of course, must hold up. So the second penalty of the game against the Knowles here, Gary, and that's one thing that uh, Coach Bowden. Uh, hope to avoid here tonight. Uh, that was on tight end Nick Franklin that time trying to hook the defensive end and uh, got uh, 10 yards for the team and holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat for that. And man line of scrimmage right here. 81. We got him. See how he grabs hands outside. You see the gray glove right there. Very easy to see right now. He grabs the shirt. And that's a new rule instituted this year. You must wear gray gloves so it's easier to see for the officials. Here comes the four packer wideouts. <laughs> Look out now. Here come the burners. Tech trying to blitz. They'll drop off the screen and he overthrew Travis Minor. Second down and 10. So Georgia Tech showed a three man rush and blitzed the backer. Well, let's take a look at what Florida State has to do when they have the ball to win this game. They have to spread the ball. Now, we know they spread the field with their spread offense, but now, without a Peter Warwick, they're going to spread the ball to different people. And you can wear a team down with the no huddle. If you're Georgia Tech, we're going to be looking at this all night. No busted yards. What they get is what they get, not the next one. Second down and 20. Steps to the middle, wants Bowden. How about how much time he has to throw the ball? An amazing performance by the offensive line. The offensive line here is going to protect only three men rushing. Three people rushing. And look at the time Winky has to just stare down the middle of the field, looked at Bolden the whole way, and then rifled it down there. And the athletic Bolden up. Came to Florida State as a quarterback, switched back and forth and back, and now he's a receiver full time. Out of Pahokee. What a wonderful high school career the youngster has. Winky fires quickly, and he's got another one. This one, Robert Morgan, his first catch of the night. So Menace, Molin, and now he comes back with Morgan. And Bolden's game was 35 yards. Fred, here's the problem when you play Florida State. If you give FSU this they're going to take it and you do not have enough time to get to Winky because he'll force you to move up throwing these short hitch pads. That's been Bobby Bowden's M.O. forever. If you're going to give them the easy throw they're going to take it. Showing a touch of arrogance favored by three touchdowns. Remember on fourth and one he got it. They were backed up second and 20. They go deep Bolden. Now they've got a first down at the 17 yard line. The markers have been moved into place. And Winky will come up under center. Strong side of the formation is to the right. Penalty fly prior to the snap. And a touchdown too. Robert Morgan beat clean. First down and 15 after the third Florida State penalty of this game. And Miner sprints to the left side. Right around the 10 yard line. Look quick on that carry, Gary. He absolutely did. And you know he's been hearing it in his ear from the coaching staff. 16 rushes last week for 37 yards. Everyone wants to know why Florida State can't run the ball better. Well, when you throw it so well, and as well as they do, it's hard to be committed to running the ball the necessary times to do it. 84 yards of total offense already. Second down and five in the fullback. Going to be very close to that first down, McCray. That's a new weapon, don't you think, Brent? McCray back in this offense. I think it's a big weapon. You know, Bobby in the past has liked the yes, fullback in this situation. They, they have so many wide receivers and there's seven or eight wide receivers. But when Bobby has a fullback that can run the ball, he likes to use them. Really has to drive Ted Roof and George O'Leary is running this defense for Georgia Tech. And then everyone else is you're crazy. All the different weapons they have to attack you with. 
Well, he's averaging four yards a pop here and minor five yards a carry. So they're getting huge chunks of yardage running the football right now with a first down at the Georgia Tech seven yard line. And it is somewhat obvious here that that size advantage of the offensive line is playing a big factor in this game so far. And they elect to stay right on the ground and you can see the second effort as McCray carried a couple of defenders with him across the five. Brent, you know it. It's not just a size advantage. Not only are they big, they're pretty athletic, but they're strong. Eleven different players for Florida straight bench over 500 pounds. Six of them are offensive linemen, either first or second team, and two of them are tight ends. That's not only size, but strength also. Players changed by the 28-year-old. Not much you can show him. It would be fair at this point. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Stands tall, comes back deflected. Incomplete. Morgan was open for a second, but Jeremy Myers makes a fine play, number 27. Morgan runs a slant, and then he flares out to the flag. And Myers, you're right, this is a tremendous play. Watch a guy come in and then come back out. Myers bumping around. Watch this. Myers, a safety, reacts to this throw. And you know what? He was kind of guessing on the play. He studied his game plan and knew Florida State likes to run that pattern down here. Well, Winky had yelled out at Morgan, and Myers might have read that when he came up to the line. Now Winky getting ready to go. Third down and goal from inside the five-yard line. Here is Miner hit and spun free. A beautiful tackle by Nick Rogers, number 38. Did he get there in a hurry? Absolutely. Nick Rogers came right around the corner. A linebacker last year moved to a slash defensive end. But watch him come right off the corner of your screen from the right. He just went for the tailback all the way, sold out on it, and made the tackle. Here's the new youngster, Chance Gwaltney. I said there, Coach Bowden, I said, there, so Chance is going to do it? And he said, yes, he is, unless he faints. So <laughs> here it comes. First career field goal attempt. And he misses this one. Bobby's going to faint. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that was low. 21-yard field goal. Might not have been the prettiest you've ever seen, but I'm telling you right now, Chance will take it, baby. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's 3-0 the Nose. A sellout crowd in Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta and Florida State held to a field goal. 14 plays, 73 yards here, Gary. Yeah, a couple great plays to really finish this thing out here. First it was Myers on a slant and flag route. Myers comes back, got faster in the offseason, hit the weights. He's running better than he did before. And look at Nick Rogers come around the corner to save four points for Georgia Tech. So the ball on the tee from Matt Munyon. And Campbell with that speed again back deep. How does a team respond after giving up points? One of the ways to evaluate a football team. Is how will Georgia Tech come right back now against Emily Faber? Florida State. Campbell again from inside the five yard line looking for an alley and he slipped. He had a cutback lane and he slipped down at the 29 yard line. Of Ronald Curry, huh? The yeah. athletic quarterback. He's 100%. I think he'll be much improved this year. Uh, first down for the Goose. Play fake. In trouble. Down inside the 20 yard line because of Jamal Reynolds' great speed from that defensive end spot. We go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, if you look closely at Goose Godsey, underneath his chin strap is a giant piece of gauze and an extra portion of super glue. His chin split open during that last series, and the medicos went to work. They didn't stitch it up, they just tried to cover it up. Takes a lot of super glue when you're playing against Florida State. And these defensive ends, Reynolds has been on a tear. That's his third sack already this season, just the second game. Second down and 18. Wide split for the Knowles defensive line. Looking for some running room. Only six in the box. Godsey throws high and incomplete, and this offense is in trouble right now. You know, one of the points I want to make about Jamal Reynolds is this afternoon, one of the games he might have been watching. Happened to be that Clemson-Missouri game. 
And one of the announcers opened up by introducing a Missouri fella and saying, now here's the finest defensive end in the country. And I'm saying, whoa, hold my on friend, a second. Hold right? on here. Now. Well, last year, Jamal had seven sacks. I mean, this was a guy who was supposed to be an All-American. There were some questions. He had been you know, labeled as the next great one, the next Renard Wilson, the next Peter Bulwer, Andre Wadsworth. Started a little slow, but he's coming on now. Remember, he had three sacks against Michael Vick in that national championship game. Time to tee off here, third and 18. Offensive line does a good job. That's he has time, but throws off to the right with the receiver, Will Glover, cutting the other way. The crowd wanted interference, but that pass was not catchable because Gotsey threw it far over to the right. So there was no chance for pass interference on the play. Well, when, you, when you're playing against Florida State, Brent, you have to have a mental clock. You're going to throw the ball on a count whether it's there or not. It's better than holding the ball, which really the Sharks just start to smell blood and they get sacked and causing the fumbles. Anquan smells a little blood in the water right now. He's going to get this field, pretty good field position. I can try to drive it. Gets it up high. Bowling on the run. Stays in bounds very close and a terrific tackle. And now a penalty flag on top of it. Terry Watkins, a wide receiver, made a special tackle. Beautiful punt, too. Bolden caught that, what, one yard from the sideline? That's a 51 yard punt. The back judge made that call very late. I wonder if he called piling on or too many. I don't know. I have no idea what it was. It maybe Florida State had too many men on the field. That's the responsibility of the back judge. This guy right back there. Yep, there he is. I knew that because he has that big B on his back. <laughs> you don't have to do a lot of memorizing that way. You asked how Georgia Tech would respond. I think when you're playing Florida State, you just have to assume they're going to score points. You're not going to shut them out. You have to slow them down, but you have to, you're right, you have to quit looking at the scoreboard and play good, sound defense. Taking them a while to get this shot. We have two out. fouls. Both fouls are against the receiving team. Holding downfield during the kick which has an end of the kick administration. We also have holding on the return. That foul is going to be declined. We will administer from the end of the kick a 10 yard foul first staff. 525 to go here in the opening quarter. Georgia Tech hosting Florida State. It's an ACC game. Seminoles lead it three nothing but they've been penalized 30 yards. Georgia Tech without a penalty here tonight. And Florida State with a first and ten. Wiki back in the shotgun. The offensive line holds up. Jeff Cheney, who just checked in, makes his way to the 24-yard line. You see Chris Winky, no huddle. This is how he gets his foot. Watch the foot. That's what makes the offense go. Once he does the foot, the ball is snapped, and the defense will adjust. We'll be watching that throughout the game, too. Ted Roof's game plan is to watch the foot, then move after it. Second down and five. There's the foot. Now the defense comes with a blitz, and they came too quickly on it. <laughs> and Winky held up the snap count and draws them into a penalty as they blitzed right off of the foot movement. So Florida State certainly knows how to adjust off of that. Well, uh, it, it's if you're going to run ball. the no huddle. Ball star. Okay. Oh my goodness, the center bucked. Jared Moon, a senior, bucked on the movement, and it was a false start. Watch the middle of your screen, right in front of Winky. Watch him buck now. There he is. That's it. Yep. And you see the nose man jump right across there. And the other blitzer came flying too. And so now that's five penalties for 35 yards in the opening quarter. That doesn't look like a number one team to me. How about you out there, folks? Second down and ten. But he cut Bowman almost intercepted. 
first intercepted on the deflection. Marvius Hester there, and I believe Javon Walker did an outstanding job after the football was deflected. We'll take a look. Walker was in that area. A little bit of a miscommunication that time between the quarterback and Bolden. But the ball is on the way right now when Bolden to the right turns around. It's already eats him up. Much too close for Bolden to react quick enough to make that catch. Third down and ten for Winky. Crowd making it difficult. Here comes the blitz. Fires high. Oh, Caught. First down menace. Check that guy's vertical. He hung in the air. He's going to get a lot of congratulations. He's going to get the wows from his own sideline, and that's the toughest wows to get at Florida State because they've seen everything. Watch this guy hang on this. Ball's on the way. Jump. Woo! He's going to get his own teammates high five in that catch. Snoop Menace out of Miami, a senior for 12 yards and a first down. A low wide, Winky incomplete. And a penalty flag. Going on the far side. Boy, so many great things have happened in college football today. I hope you had a chance to watch at least part of that Notre Dame game against Nebraska. That was a dandy. Cornhuskers pull it out in overtime. I'm sure that John Saunders and Terry Bowden have been watching all the action today. Offside defense. John, we got to find out if Coach Tuberville, who went back in there with Auburn, has been safe. First down now. Winky pump fake. Going to come deep. Going to go for the home run. Got it. Touchdown, Florida State. He beat pass interference and everything else. Javon Walker from Lafayette, Louisiana. Javon Walker, the junior college transfer. When you transfer into Florida State, you better have a lot of confidence in your ability because you know there's a whole stable of receivers there. A beauty, it looked like out of the jug machine, 63 yard total yards on that pass. Pass interference, penalty decline, touchdown. Probably traveled in the air 55 yards. A 63 yard play. Walker, a little shaken up on that play. So, uh, yeah. Peter Warwick. Those, pe huh. <laughs> Those penalties don't seem to be bothering him too much either, huh? Here's Gwaltney. And he nails the extra point. Patrell, the punter, the holder. Walker being tended to open the sideline. Two spectacular plays. And this, the last one, 63 yards, Gary. Right. Anytime you have guys knocking down curl routes, Florida State and Mark Rick's going to come back with the pump fake and go deep. Watch. Pump fake. And throw that ball deep. That is just a beautifully thrown ball. Now Myers is out there, and he just runs up the top of Morgan. Morgan, tremendous concentration, gets it in. And you know when you have eight receivers, you want the ball. Myers should have taken interference. Watch him pull himself out. The ball is a little underthrown on this play. Now watch what happens to 27. He'll pull himself around. In that situation, he needed to go right on into him. He actually it would have been a 15-yard penalty instead of a 63-yard touchdown. Not in the NFL, but in the college, it's right. a different rule. Right. He kind of overrun and misjudged the ball, Brent. I think he would have liked to have done that if he kept his wits about him. But it's actually one of the rules I don't like about college football because it prevents a lot of great deep passes with defensive backs just grabbing guys when they're beat. Von Walker, great concentration on that football. Mm. How about the protection to be able to pump fake and throw the ball 50 yards downfield? If you're going to beat Florida State, somebody may before the year's over. You, have to, you better get ready to score some points. Yeah, and you have to get the Winky, too. You have to gamble on the outside, play man coverage, and get to Chris Winky. You can't better sit back in zone. Riding a 13 game winning streak. And they're just saying, come on, Mr. Campbell, show us what you got. Looking for that alley again. Another penalty flag flying on the play. The referee trailing on the play through the flag. Yeah, and that, that one's going to go all the way back to about the nine yard line, too. Oh, boy. Mm. We have a new quarterback, but it is the number three man, Jermaine Crenshaw, number 12. Now, this little fella can scamper a little bit. 
And here he comes, making like a Joe Hamilton on his first carry, and he ambushes the Knowles to the 25-yard line. I got to tell you, folks, my partner Gary Danielson was all over that one at practice. He predicted this. No, I, I, didn't no, I, had, it. I had Mr. Busberger even doubt me. He said, no way this guy's going to play it. I said, I don't know. <laughs> you were right, partner. He's yeah. going to play a lot now after I think that. he will. Jermaine Crenshaw has played wide receiver also in his career. Came back. In fact, Ralph Friesian tried to talk him into staying at wide receiver. Jermaine said, no, I want to be a quarterback. This guy might be right. First down, here comes that option. You got to get to the boundary up Florida State, Coach Friedman said. Nothing there. Let's go to Jack of Root. Brent, the difference between the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets of this year and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets of 1998 is the Florida State game one year ago when Joe Hamilton almost led to one of the biggest upsets in the ACC. They fell short, but Joe told me earlier this week that changed the attitude of the Yellow Jackets. They feel when they go up against anybody, even if they're down in a score, they can come back. So they're not necessarily out of this game. Remember that Georgia game? Absolutely. So the final 30 seconds here of the opening quarter. Knowles lead it by 12. Let's look here. Fire to the snap, and he let the clock run. He's going to take a take a penalty. Dead ball on the offense, delay of game, five yards. Folks, one statistic tells it all. Florida State, 200 yards in the opening quarter, and Georgia Tech, 13. Florida State, 175 yards in the air in the opening quarter. That's yeah, unbelievable. It, it is, and some I, I promise you, I've been on teams like this. Sometimes when you get a penalty, you just say, thank you, there's more yards to gain. That's how you feel. You're so confident in moving the ball. Second down at 15. Quarterback draw. Clint Shaw. Fine looking run. By far the most impressive part of Tech's offense tonight has been third string quarterback Jermaine Crenshaw. You have to give Crenshaw a lot of credit. You know, these kids are all highly recruited when they come to these major colleges and universities. Crenshaw had a dream of being a quarterback. The coaches evaluate him, said he's a wide receiver. Crenshaw believed in himself, and he may be right. Still first half. And still outson straight ahead. <laughs> Let's check in with Jack Aru. Well, Brent, you would think that Marcus Outson might be a little disgruntled, seeing how he figured he would work his way up to quarterback, and then Chris Winkie showed up. Well, it was a story that Mark Rick told Marcus over the offseason. He said, you know, when I was a quarterback, I was a backup to a guy that was projected to be the starter. He went down after four games, and I had to fulfill his problem. I had to go in for him. Mark Rick said, you know who the name of that guy was? Jim Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, Mark was a good one down there at Miami. Kelly, of course, a Hall of Famer. Started that good quarterback tradition down there. High caught Bolden. First down Seminoles. Anquan Bolden, the sophomore, the one-time high school quarterback. Wow. That's another guy. You don't think the athletes are playing for Florida State? Watch this one. Outs and goes back, throwing from his old end zone. Slant pass, not thrown very well. 40-inch vertical goes up and gets it again. Is that nice to have Mark Rick believe in your backup quarterback to throw the ball when you're on your own five, six yard line like that? Here comes Miner. Broke a tackle. First out at the 31-yard line over there on the far side. Brent, we kind of mentioned busted yards, what it means, and I thought this number would be big, like missed tackles or having guys hemmed in and not getting the tackle. Well, you mentioned it. Florida State has 233 yards, but only 20 of those are sometime that the defense should have stopped them. That means the offense is clicking in full gear tonight. Under enormous pressure, they have climbed the ladder to catch two beautiful passes. Right. Minor, for example, cut off here with the Georgia Tech speed. It is going to be an improved Tech defense. Absolutely. They're much quicker this year, and I don't see a lot of missed tackles out here or missed assignments. I just see a superior offense making plays. Nathan Brown made that one. Here's third down and five with 9.27 to go. What kind of bootlegger option with the running quarterback? Oh, 
to go deep. Penalty flag at the 45 yard line. Javon Walker, who caught the 63 yarder for the game's only touchdown, was being interfered with by Jamara Clark. Everybody talks about patience in sports. When you're a cornerback, when the ball is in the air, that's when you have to exhibit that patience as a corner. Don't panic. The ball's going to come down. Don't interfere a guy on a play where you're right there. Look at that. One on one, perfect coverage. You're right in position. Now don't panic. Here comes the ball. Don't grab a hold of him. That's an easy call for the referee. Even if you don't interfere, when you run over a guy like that, and that's interference, they're going to call it every time, and you bail out a fourth throw on that team. So the 15 yarder. Clark got beat last week for the 79 yard touchdown against Central Florida, also. Down and Otzi with that short drop. It's picked off. Hello, end zone. Georgia Tech is right back in it. Marvius Hester with a marvelous pick. He may have pulled a hammy, but Georgia Tech will take the six. Bails out Outset on one throw, and Hefter bails out Georgia Tech on the next throw. The extra point is good. Luke Manje. Three step drop from I formation, trying to throw the quick hitch. This time Hefter was sitting on it, baiting Outset all the way. Wanted him to throw the guy, and that was what, 50 yards, something like that. A 50-yard interception. 50-yard interception. You see, Hester, he was ready. He read the foot, the footwork of the quarterback, and stepped right in front of him. Now look how how he pulled up. Yeah. We got to check on that. That could be a hammy. Hot Atlanta now, folks. 12-7-904, and I can hear some Cornhusker fans making a little whoopee out there in the heartland too. They'd like to see Georgia Tech. Stage an upset here. At least make it close. Keep Nebraska number one. Well, it's time to put in the old vet now on this drive, isn't it? Yeah, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> Come back with Chris Winkie now, but you're right. Crowd's back into it. George O'Leary has his team believing they can play with these guys. That has to be contagious to everybody on the field and in the stands. They got to cover because there'll be some speed. Parrish and Maddox back deep for the nose. Parrish going to get a crack at it. And he's short of the 20-yard line, folks. No surprise, the grand old man of Florida State football is back. 28-year-old Chris Rankin. First down, Flair got running room with Minor. Beautiful sprint. Fumble comes loose. But I believe, let's see, yeah, as number 87, Robert Morgan jumped on the ball. Just a simple flare pass. Florida State runs it a lot of times to the outside, but you see right now it's going to be no huddle. Minky's going to bring it up and try to fatigue this defense, take the crowd right out of it. McCray for three. And uh, as you recall on that fine interception for a touchdown, Hester appeared to pull a hamstring. Let's check in with Jack Aruk, Jack. Well, Brent, indeed he did pull a hamstring, but quick work by the athletic trainer for Georgia Tech. They pre taped him, medicated him, and they say Marvius is ready to go back out there and try and grab another one. Jack, I wonder if that pickle juice works on hamstrings the way it does on the cramps. Yeah, to read that story, Gary. Don't you wish, right? <laughs> Second, Second it was that easy. Seven, yeah. True freshman in the game for Hester. Jonathan Cox. Toss was a little bit high. The back Cheney was moving right toward the line of scrimmage. And this is going to be third and long. And Georgia Tech is aroused here, folks. That was a fine play by Brown again. 
very hard to be patient and run the ball if you're Florida State. I mean, it's just so easy to throw the football. It's just hard to do, hard to make the calls. How many times do you have a 28-year-old quarterback, right? You got to do so. <laughs> He's facing third and six and a ton of noise here. If Flair now to Cheney and Cheney, a good receiver, has the first down, crosses midfield, out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Chris Winkie's just following his reads this time. Georgia Tech is playing a soft zone. An umbrella look, trying to play a catch cover two, and Winkie says, if you drop back, I'm just going to hit my back. you got to come up and tackle him. Gary, he's thrown for 214 yards already in the night of the first half. He's 10 of 17. He's going again. Push up, uh, but he couldn't catch the ball. I don't think that was catchable over there. I, I thought it was a push up on Bells that time, didn't you? Yeah, there was contact out there. A turns Bell, watch him push off Clark this time. He pushes Clark out of the way, but luck, well, well could have been caught, I guess, if he'd elevated not, for not it. Not inbounds. Yeah. Not inbounds. Seven, seven, oh, Shoved seven. him away. <laughs> that was the first time they tried to go deep on Clark. Side defense, five yards. Well, after Florida State is penalized repeatedly in the opening quarter, now it is Georgia Tech's turn to be hit with the yellow. And they have been penalized seven times, make it now eight times for 55 yards. Ten men at the line of scrimmage on defense for Tech. All ten right there. Now they're going to back off. Mickey makes the signal. Offensive line gives him great time. Double team in zone, grab incomplete. Bell wanted interference on that play. He was double teamed in the end zone. I mean, they had him sandwiched there. Jeremy Myers, the safety this time, did such a great job, number 27. You're going to see him come in the left side of the screen. Even though Winky tries to look him up, Byers doesn't fight. He's right in position this time to take away that play. Perfect coverage. Almost made a catch too, didn't he, folks? Yep. Second down and five. And they come right back with Mr. Minor. First down noise inside the 25 yard line. Travis Minor very upset with himself that time. Running into a player. I thought he was going to break that one. Mark Rick. Guy right there. That's Mark, right there, offensive coordinator. He mentioned it. Played at University of Miami. I'm sure he had an eye on that game today, didn't he? Wild one in the final in Washington. Pulls it out in the fourth quarter, beating Miami. First down and ten, and now on the slant, pick up seven or eight more yards. Now, remember, folks, we ask you to identify the kicker who missed wide right number one against Miami. That was back in '91. Well, it was Jerry Thomas from 34 yards. But, folks, here's why the story takes on the latter meeting. We talked to Coach Bobby Bowden about it. I said, Bobby, do you remember who missed these? Was right away, Jerry Thomas. And he said, you know, Brent, if he happens to be watching this game, he never played for us after that, tell him to give me a call. I've never spoken to the young man. Fumble by McCray, Georgia Tech pounces on it. Georgia Tech recovers the fumble. Last week versus BYU, 87 plays, no fumbles. Brent, that was right in the magical error area that Georgia fumbled in last year in that 41 to 40 shootout. Remember that, Sanks, Jeff? And this one saves it. It was stripped away. And Ricardo Wimbush with the recovery. Look, Gary, you know, when it started out, it looked like the Knowles were going to rout him, but uh, suddenly Georgia Tech's making a game of well, it. Well, you know, switching quarterbacks came to backfire on Bobby. You know, they tried to be a little bit greedy with some calls. I mean, they're going to put the backup in, run the ball. Tech's back in the football game. And Jermaine Crenshaw has had a big hand in this comeback. He is three of four passing. He's also rushed for 30 yards. Now he has a dangerous first down against this defense inside the 10. 
Virginia Tech has already surrendered one safety against this goal defense. They elect to play it safe. I'm right straight ahead of Gregory. Number 22, Sean Gregory. Nicky Andrews was saying that his defense was not as deep, but if you look at the stats from the first game against BYU, 26 different defenders played in that game against BYU. That's pretty deep. Well, looking a little bit concerned over there on the sideline right now. Second down and seven. Now oh, that coaching staff has been together so long, one of the reasons why they've been successful. Second down and seven. Timeout has been called by Crenshaw. And a penalty flag. I see a penalty flag thrown by the umpires. Are they going to pick it up? I see two penalty flags coming down. They have a false start before the timeout? Did not see it. Soon somebody picked up their hand. Dead ball. Delay of game prior to the request for the timeout. Five yards. Not needed, not against these guys. Well, Jermaine is, he's tried a couple of things, folks. Yeah. Two passes on one play. <laughs> then get, get a timeout, maybe they won't see the double zero well, up there he, on the clock. That's why he tried to call a quick timeout, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, it, as, as tough as it, 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 we saw some concern on Mickey Andrews' face, but the fact is the defense has only given up 61 yards in this game. Yeah, and, and, and their offense has 300. Right. You know, it's just up on the scoreboard. It doesn't look that good, and it was the 50-yard interception return for the Georgia Tech touchdown. That doesn't show up in their offensive production either. And right, the belly of the fullback on out to the nine-yard line. Should <laughs> down and ten, and this is a half that won't end here, yeah. Mr. Daniels. Well, when you when you go to Florida State, you know you're going to get a lot of TV time because most of the games last three and a half to four hours. Marcus Outson uh, over there, he threw that pass that was picked off by Hester. He went 50 Every, yards. Everybody and makes mistakes. Marcus, you got to be ready. Made a game of it. Now on second down. That's it, Juggles. Middle's open, but it closes in a hurt. George Gotze on the carry. Dockett. Darnell Dockett, number 45. Tripping up the quarterback. Final 20 seconds. Okay. Wants to get that signal just right. His brother's backup quarterback up at Notre Dame. And uh, the Irish with a with a fine game today, but came up a little short in overtime. They kicked a field goal, and Nebraska came down, scored the touchdown. Eric Crouch. Boy, that was a big third down pass in that game. Now Crenshaw. Collides with the fullback, and as a result, the play goes nowhere. I thought he fumbled the snap first. Then he collided with the fullback, and then he almost fumbled afterwards. Almost three. Watch out. Wilder back into the game. You see the big brace on Wilder's right leg. Got a big black brace. He's going to line up at fullback this time. And they'll move Burns from fullback to tailback here on second down and goal. They run Burns right behind him. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Wilder blows the hole open on the ISO play. The quarterback. Watkins is lined up, now steps in motion. They switch the formation. Tight end comes in motion. Got to throw for the deuce. Got it. What? How about this, ladies and gentlemen? 
and gentlemen. A nice rub play. It's a pick. There's no doubt about it. You rub off the tight end coming in motion. You come right underneath them just like a basketball play. The tight end is going to come in motion and you rub right underneath it. First the touchdown. Isolation play right there. There's Wilder. You called the ice. He's going to come right up the gut. Blows out Gibson that time. Burns takes it right in there. And you saw Mickey giving it to Warren on that sideline because he doesn't collapse on this play fast enough. He leaves the hole open. Warren gets there a step late. Andrews is livid with his left defensive end. Here comes the two point play. Let's see if we can show you the pick play coming out. Coming rubs right underneath it. Godsey makes a beautiful throw into the end zone. No-brainer, wouldn't it? He just put the three points on the board and play the fourth quarter. Well, here's your fourth and five, folks, as we come to the end of the third. Georgia Tech shows press. And again. Winky. Great income play. Georgia Tech will take over. The Tech defense stands tall again. Jonathan Cox, number 23, has played himself some football game tonight. Jonathan Cox is just a freshman. There's the matchup. It's it's out to the outside. Javon Walker, he wants to go to a locked-on comeback. You go deep, you come back. Cox stays with it, actually, a little bit. Walker fell down to make the play. You see, Winky, has got a matchup he wants. He goes to it, throws the ball properly to the outside, but a poor route to the outside by Javon Walker and great coverage by Cox turns the ball over. Gotsey dashes in. 18 seconds remain here in the third quarter. Under pressure will fire an incomplete. Boy, this guy's motor reminds me of all the great ones. Jamal Reynolds again coming around that corner. Godsey starting to take that pounding. Crenshaw replaces him. You know, he, here he comes. He's going to get hammered again by this guy. Coming from the outside, Reynolds coming from the other side. Jackson, you know, instead of being goose, he's going to be gooey after this game. <laughs> I thought you were going somewhere else. <laughs> so, <laughs> <good down. laughs> so I know. And Crenshaw. Tiptoes for a couple of yards, and the final seconds tick away as David Warren makes a play. So that'll do it. But would you believe it? On a day when Florida State could perhaps jump back to number one, they find themselves trailing a 22 point underdog by three points at the end of the third quarter. If you can believe it, the crowd looks even larger than when this game began. Absolutely. There's excitement in the air. Number one, unbeaten a year ago, and off to a start with a 1-0 and record already, is in trouble here, trailing by three as we start the fourth quarter. I'd see on the field for Georgia Tech, one of the two quarterbacks used, in case you just joined us. Gotsey sprinting on the run, and it's incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. Young man from Tampa's no, Jesuit no, High School. Fourth down. Oh, it was fourth down. It was third down then. And fourth down now. Look at that. You said standing room only. There they are. They're out here. You get a good football game, people will find it. They're ready to watch. On well, fourth down now, Dyke under pressure. He knows the Knowles will be chomping. They're looking for something on special teams to turn this thing around. And he gets it off and he drives Bowling back inside the 30 yard line. Slips the first defender. Picks up a block. And he's still down at the 37 yard line. George O'Leary, the special teams coach, as well as the head coach, has done a superb job here tonight with that part of the tech game. We talked about what Florida State needed to do to put some points on the board in this game. One was wear tech down with a no huddle. That has not happened, and these busted yards. You know, Florida State has put up some yards in this game, but I don't recall a lot of missed tackles, and I think that stat has been in Georgia Tech's favor. They have played sound defense against this team. Winky and the shotgun. Yeah. 
sets it to Miner on the screenplay. First down to the 40-yard line of Tech. Where's that play been, Mr. Daniels? Well, they tried it once earlier, and it was an incomplete pass, as you remember, but this time, Winky really invited that defense in. Showed a little quick feet on that thing and got rid of it. Watch Winky. Screen pass. Miner right here is going to block it and go out, but watch Winky's feet. He keeps backing up. Looks a lot quicker this year than he did before. Invites, invites, invites. Throws a perfect pass, and that's a nice block in front. Miner makes a big play. He knows it's a blitz. Nobody deep. Everybody's in the picture. We don't have much of a picture there. Right there, close. He has All thrown for 310 yards tonight. Uses Miner as a running back to the 36-yard line. We talked busted yards, Brent, and it has been pretty good for Georgia Tech. They have not missed a lot of tackles. I thought this number would be something at this part of the game, like 150 plus, and it's at one at 46 yards. That's pretty good defense. I don't think you can complain about that if you're Ted Will for Georgia Larry. Not a lot of missed tackles. Moves the pocket to the right. Receiver covered and Winky reaches for the first down and sprints out showing that speed of his that you talked about. <laughs> Main reason he came back, right? Coming out, what the scouts said is he needed to get thinner. He needed to show better foot speed. So Chris lost 21, plus, uh, 15 pounds, excuse me, and had a 21-yard gain last week. The ball on the tech. 30-yard line. Wow, that's a long time. That's probably all of Bobby Bowden's career, isn't it? <laughs> well, they certainly haven't lost him since they joined no, the ACC. Sure. On the shotgun. Middle. Got it. Touchdown. Robert Morgan. That was a very, very dangerous throw by Chris Winkler. He threw it late over the middle on his back foot against a defense that was not bump and run. Man, very dangerous. He got away with it. You see it. Georgia Tech got their guys. They got people looking at this ball. Watch from the right side of the screen. Someone comes into the picture. The ball was hanging there, but Morgan takes it and puts it into the end. Big extra point. Man, knuckleball across. He almost put but it down the tunnel. Good. And it puts it on four. So it's 1915. You take a look at Chris Winky, who is now 20 of 33 for 340 yards. And this, his second touchdown pass of the night. Florida State leads it with 1258 left in the fourth quarter. And just like that. They regain the lead. 63 yards in four plays. Took them less than two minutes. Chris Winky has, has had an amazing run ever since that North Carolina State game when he fired those interceptions to keep NC State in the game for the upset. He has been playing solid football, winning every football game, and he looked good in the pocket there. He just threw very late, got away with one, but hey, that's what you do. You roll the dice sometimes and you get it. Now Georgia Tech looking for a spot. a penalty. Onion, they'll get decent field position. And let us go back. Remember, Gary said that he spent a long time in the pocket. Take a look at exactly how long here this time. It's collapsing on him. Looks right, looks left, tries to scramble out, can't get out there, and then throws late down the middle. You can't get away with that in the NFL. You just don't do that type of a play, but right here he found a guy, threw it up, grabs, and his guy came up with it. Mom and dad watch him. That's Ron on the Left hand side, betting St. Paul, Minnesota. They're always here. For Florida State games are down in Tallahassee. Gotsi in at quarterback on first down. Trolling by four, need a touchdown. And on the slant, they come to Glover, and he's tackled from behind after a short gain as they brought him back to the line. Travis Johnson making the play. Receiver screen coming down, jailbreak screen, whatever you want to call it. I think Glover kind of bobbled the ball and forced him to take his eyes off 
the open field, he could have turned that ball up and maybe picked up a five or six more yards. Now needs six. Crenshaw off the option. Gregory oh, pounded a couple yards short. Last week, Joe Burns got all the carries, and George O'Leary told us, he said, oh, we got to get the other kid in a little bit. That's too many carries for Burns. Gregory's a good football player. We got to use them both tonight. He has looked impressive running the ball. Now a huge third and one situation, and it is a long one. So they are double the tight ends, and now they bring a third one in. They got plenty of time. Florida State stacks the middle. Power first down. Penalty flag flying, however, but that's holding. It's coming back. Right. Everybody was stacked so much together right then, you hard, you hard to even see it. Big penalty against Georgia Tech. Huge. That's one of the things that a lot of quarterbacks, veteran quarterbacks, will tell their line on third and short. Hey, no penalties. We should be able to pick this up. Even if you miss your guy, we should be able to pick this up. Third and ten. Freegen changes his offensive personnel. Three or four times tonight in this play, Gatsi has been taking the snap and running that controlled scramble to the wide side of the field. Short of the first down. Georgia Tech must punt. Joe Burns is four or five yards short on the play. Bradley Jennings, the linebacker, took the money back out and made the play for the nose. Now it's Dyke trotting out of the field again. 10:45 left in the fourth. So that penalty cost Georgia Tech an opportunity to keep that drive going. Didn't it? Bowling. First back and again, outstanding coverage by Georgia Tech's punt team. Left in regulation, and Florida State leads it by four. 1950. This is a first and ten for the Knowles. Winky hit on the release. Wants Bolden. Bolden with a circus grab at the 40-yard line. Oh, brother, what a catch. You can see what type of athlete Bolden is. He does not have that speed that Peter Warwick had where you, you feared him, but you could saw he jumped up early in the game on a curl pattern, made the catch. Here he goes athletically up and catches his ball one foot clearly down, catches it again, even with the double coverage. Winky puts it in the one spot where his receiver can get it. Got a blitz look. Here they come. 46 more yards. And now Minor. Crosses the 35-yard line. Chris Winky, here tonight in this game, has thrown for 386 yards and two touchdowns. He's 21 of 34. Now, the big play of the game for Georgia Tech was an interception, but it was Marcus Outson, the backup quarterback, who threw that out, which was picked off by Hester, who then dashed in 50 yards for the touchdown that made it close. Georgia Tech then went ahead. 15-12, and now the Knowles have bounced back, and they're on the move again. Second down and nine. Up firing. Got it high. Inside the 15-yard line. A penalty flag, however, is thrown back at the line of scrimmage as Morgan makes the grab. 
just this week he let that pass go. He saw that flag go right across his vision and turned around and knew exactly what it was. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack. Brent, what was the last time you saw Bobby Bowden with that headset on his head throughout most of a quarter? That's the case tonight. He has gone to different and respective uh, teams, the defense and the offense. He's walked up to Chris Winkie. I have never seen Bobby Bowden on game night coach directly as, as much as he has done tonight. It's been a while. I agree with that. Usually everything's working so well. He just sits back and, uh, and watches and enjoys it. But tonight he's been very involved in the sideline. Ball coming all the way back to the 45 yard line. That's 14 penalties against Florida State. 14 from 99 yards. Second down and 19. Pump fake. Middle of the field. There it is. Inside the 25 yard line for a first down, it is Bell. All day. That, that, that is there all day. It's a little bit riskier to throw the ball there. But the middle of the field has been vacated by this Georgia Tech defense. Just a big, deep cross in from the wide receiver out there. Bell comes in, bends in, and they're looking at all that space. Ball's put right between the two and the six. That was very, very simple. So, Chris Winkie's all time leading passer with 408 yards here tonight. Going for more, got it at the four-yard line. Puts it right back in Morgan's hands. Full blitz again, no safeties, and both corners played outside technique. You can't give them the inside when there's no help. The one thing that Winky is doing tonight is he is impressing some Heisman Trophy votes. Yep, he's got mine. Right now he's my leader, and he was coming into the season. Thrown for 427 yards, no interceptions, and two touchdowns here tonight. I'm not welcome in West Lafayette anymore, but he's my pick so far. <laughs> Minor, and he's short of the end zone. Second down and goal for Florida State. And we've got a Georgia Tech defensive player, Clay Brooks, Clay Brooks yeah. who has played a heck of a game. He was tackled by number 97, Felipe Claybrooks, who was shaken up on the play. And while he's receiving some attention, let's remind everybody that at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Ladies and gentlemen, it'll be a major upset if Chris Winky doesn't get well, one he's for Florida for State. For 400, what is it, 425 yards, 427 yards passing in this football game. 23 of 36. And we can take a look at the uh, at the all time list. There's Gary Huff. 6,300. That's who we passed here tonight. Danny Cannell still in the NFL. Thad Busby. Last we heard he had played a little arena league ball this year. And of course Charlie Ward one of the point guards at the New York Knicks yep. of the NBA. Making more than all. <laughs> Probably combined. <laughs> exactly. Now that you think about it. <laughs> Well, Michigan State coming back against Marshall today, and I might say, ladies and gentlemen, you get a chance to watch that T.J. Duckett up there in a Spartan uniform. He's one of the better running backs in the country that we've seen lately. Meanwhile, last time I saw Nick Saban and LSU were doing a number on Houston. I don't know what happened late in that game. Arizona's jumped ahead of the Buckeyes were here, seven-three. Second down and goal. Fullback McCray battling toward the end zone, and uh, there is a flag down. I thought he was short of the goal line. They're going to pick it up. They're going to pick that flag up. Good. I don't know. What are we doing? They're going to pick it up. Cheney going to come in from the right. sidelines. And now we pick it up. <laughs> We always get it right eventually. Third down. McCray again. This time, touchdown Florida State. And that headset comes off. Well, Bobby Bowden 
was raised on the uh, uh, I formation tight end. He loved to run the sweep. He said it's his favorite play, the sweep play. And when things got tough in this football game, he went back to his tight end I formation. Still threw the ball, but went back to what he is comfortable with. Chris Winkie made the throws, but I think Bobby took over calling this game. I think Jackson's exactly right. Another chance for Gordon. Well, it made it again. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Man. Not pretty, but he hadn't missed yet. And then he hadn't fainted either, Coach. <laughs> It's 26 15, 745 left for Georgia Tech. Well, the air smells just a little bit sweeter for Coach Bobby Bowden right about now. He'll be 71 years old here and the first family of football. He's a coach here at Florida State. And of course, we hear from Terry back in our studio with John Saunders and another son. Tommy Bowden doing an outstanding job and don't forget Jeff Bowden who works with the wide receivers here on this Seminole staff and today Clemson beat up on Missouri pretty good 62 to 9 and we're going to be joined by Tommy Bowden on the telephone for a time as Georgia Tech tries to get something going with a return Campbell and he'll be out of bounds and uh, let us bring in Tommy Bowden and Tommy uh, congratulations today. Uh, this was a pretty big win for you over Missouri. Well it is they're going to play some other big 12 teams uh, later on in the year of Nebraska and Colorado and Texas. It gives us a chance to see how we compare against those teams. Have you had a chance to watch the Knowles struggle for a bit here tonight and uh, what's your take on this game. Yeah I, I think it's I think it's daddy's glasses. If he could take him glasses off <laughs> he might could see better. <laughs> First down and 10. Gotze over the middle with a completed pass. And uh, yeah, there, there's a look at those those glasses. You, you just don't think that's daddy's look, huh, Tommy? No, that's why he can't find anybody. <laughs> he's, he's not looking for people. He's running into them. I think, I think he's Jack just told him. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, <laughs> now, what, what about the fact when he puts the headset on, Tommy, like he did? What does that mean? Well, he, he does. He, he gets. You know, they're in I four. He his comfort zone is the I formation. And if they're gonna stay in the eye, then he he can really help them out on the phone. Well, there's a there's a first down. We go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, I told uh, Bobby what Tommy had just said on the phone, and he said, "Is that right?" <laughs> well, I'm gonna talk to you when we go on offense. <laughs> Hey First Tommy, you you're in your second year there at Clemson. How are you getting closer? I know you played Florida State tough at home last year, but how close are you to these guys? Well, the, the, the talent level is still we're we're still behind the talent level. I think we're doing some things on offense and defense that will give us a chance to compete, but I don't know if we can close it like we need to until we recruit for three more, a couple more years and, and, and increase the talent level. You know, Tommy, you've got to be impressed with the coaching job that Georgia Tech has turned in against your daddy here tonight, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They were so weak defensively a year ago. They've done a fine job here tonight. I think Ted Ruth, their defensive coordinator, looks like him. He's really made some good adjustments and, and given them a better chance to be successful. Their offense has always kept you off balance, and it looks like they're, they're continuing to do that. Yeah, here's uh, offensive coordinator for region with the call. Second down and two. They have alternated quarterbacks. Godsey staying in. 26 15 Florida State with the lead right now. Godsey eyes that no defense. They'll run against it and there's another first down for him Tommy. They're moving the ball pretty good on this. Ill illegal formation though for Georgia Tech that time. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Hey Tommy for, for, if you're going to play against Florida State what do you think is the key to competing with them. What do you have to attack and what do you have to prevent. Well I don't think there's any doubt that you have success against them. Offensively, you got to be able to protect the quarterback, and you've got to be able to throw and catch versus tight press man coverage. Right. They're, they're going to take away the hitches and the slants, and and pretty much make you go deep with low percentage throws. And if you can do that, you've got a chance. Hey Tommy, uh, were you surprised at Lou Holtz in South Carolina ambushing the Georgia Bulldogs today? Well, I tell you, they, South Carolina has good talent. I'm familiar with some of the players they have because Brad Scott recruited a lot of those players. And then I, I, I thought that they could eventually have success. Coach Holtz has won too many games not to get that turned around. Exactly. So after the penalty, second down and seven here for Georgia Tech. After blitz throws complete at midfield, first down. 
Hey, Tommy, talk a little bit about your quarterback. You had Sean King at Tulane, and now you got Woody Danzler running that offense. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, uh, Woody's just got a little bit of running skills what Sean had. Sean was, had really quick feet, was a good runner, uh, a really accurate thrower. Woody's becoming a more accurate thrower, but he's a tailback. If you see us in a one-back formation, it's just kind of like an eye formation for the lead blocker. <laughs> yep. Hey, Tommy, thanks a lot for joining us. Congratulations and keep up the good work at Clemson. Tell Terry, thanks for giving me airtime. <laughs> <laughs> First down now, and Gatsy pulls it out for the Ramblin' Wreck. Got a man wide open underneath for an eight yard gain. Russell Matvey, the tight end. We're all thinking, we're all thinking Terry for extra air time. Tackle made by number 29, <laughs> Tommy Pauly. This is a pretty impressive drive right now for Georgia Tech. They have moved to the Seminole 40 yard line. They have, in five plays, covered 33 yards. And doing it rather crisply, not this time. Alonzo Jackson from Americus, Georgia, bringing the heat that time for the Knolls. Yeah, Jamal Reynolds getting a little blow on the sideline. Reynolds jumps over to that uh, right defensive end spot, and he comes in and gets the sack. Timeout has been called. So we'll take a break. Florida State leading Georgia Tech 26 to 15. Well, here in Atlanta, the crowd a little quieter than they were a few minutes ago as Florida State storms back into the lead. Chris Winkie, five of six this quarter for 140 yards. And one touchdown. And now it'll be Gotsi's turn inside the 50. This is a second and 18 coming up here. Middle. Deliver. Watkins right away. Check that. That was Watkins, number nine. And another penalty flag. Uh, I, I think that's going to be called against the Georgia Tech late hit a late block on the play. I think Joe Burns is the guy who did it too. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac Grand Am, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. Burger King, got the urge? Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. On a Georgia skyline on a beautiful Saturday night. 26 15, Florida State leading it, 5 26 to go. From the pack, Third and 24, it's a hard way to go against this Noel defense. Sets the screen, Burns. Got a block downfield <laughs> and got quite a bit of it back, but still way short of the first down. Well, we started out the night talking about Nebraska's struggle, forced to overtime before beating the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And we said that Florida State would make a statement and an argument that they should be number one here tonight. Now, what's your feeling, Gary, about that? Uh, I don't think they have done enough to pass Nebraska. Now, I still think Florida State maybe is the best team, but I think winning at South Bend is a good win enough win for Nebraska. I think they stayed there. And you know me, I'm still making an argument that Michigan attention <laughs> with the Miami. All right, why don't you try to sell Miami of Florida? That might be just as easy. <laughs> Let's go down to Jack and Rue, Jack. Brent, remember in the first half we told you how the boys down at Kinlaw's Barbershop aren't watching on Saturdays anymore? Yep. Well, let me show you the reason why they'll be watching soon. Number 24 is Ron Kinlaw. And in his first varsity game at 15 years old, scored two touchdowns for Stratford High. Ronald Kinlaw is the cousin of Courtney Brown. Here comes another one out of Alvin, huh? That's yep. great. Courtney Brown, what a dandy he was up there at Penn State. What a dandy he is right now for the Cleveland Browns. I think they made the, the, the right pick in that draft.
Brent, you know, the other thing I also also think is that Georgia Tech has survived this game and their schedule kind of turns in their favor a little bit now. Well, we got a moment here. Let me thank our folks who brought you this game, the executive producer of ABC Sports, Howard Katz, and the executive producer of ABC College Football, John Filippelli, the director of production, Bob Toms, the coordinating producer and the producer of tonight's game, Bob Goodrich. Our director is Larry Cam, TD Monty Poling, associate director Scott McGrath, and production manager Scott Silverman. On fourth and 12, trailing it by 11, Tech to go for it. Incomplete. And Gibson with a shot at it. Roughing the passer, though. It's going to be first down. This game's not over. This game is not over yet. Not likely to change, but it's not over. Well, he, he threw a roughing the passer flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense 15 yards. <laughs> It's going to be Reynolds. The ball is let go. One and a half steps and put the helmet right in the back of the head. That'll cost you about five grand in the NFL. And uh, there are quite a few people in college football that believe that Florida State go for the quarterback. 33 penalties here tonight. Great courage by George Gatsy in this football game. Back to the middle, got Miles, touchdown Georgia Tech. After the roughing the passer, Gatsy strikes with Myers for the touchdown, and they're back to within five. Absolutely, this game is not over. Now you gotta go for two. Make it a three-point game. They've hit one two-point conversion already. What you don't want to do is blow a timeout to do it. Get something to hold and call it. Tech with one left, and Florida State out of timeouts. Make two here, and Bobby will put that headset back on. <laughs> this game's not over. Trouble. It'll stay at 5, 26 21. No chance. Reynolds, Johnson, Bargin across I'll that line. George Gotze has earned respect from his football team tonight and all Georgia Tech fans. Touch, here's Gotze right here. You're going to see him stay in the pocket, but way down on the left side of the field. He waits, he waits, he waits, breaks out to the flat. There it is. Right in the corner of the end zone, a perfect throw. Gatsy had just got nailed the play before to the outside. Zone coverage. When Myers goes back outside, Tay Cody does not sink enough. You see him coming into the frame. Very poor coverage, very poor zone coverage, and Myers gets the touchdown. And we also saw, as we watched them blow the two point conversion up, they simply just blew through the defensive line. They had too much penetration. But after this, we saw Mickey Andrews get right in Reynolds' face over there about that roughing. Well, it was a cheap shot. There is no question that Andrews doesn't want to see anything like that out there, especially a play like that that uh, keeps Georgia Tech alive right. as they hit. It's now 26 21. Let's see if the onside kick. Second year in a row for Georgia Tech being in a football game against Florida State. Philip Newman, the kicker. Travis Miner, I believe, recovered the onside kick a year ago when Georgia Tech. I, I think Tech. they're going to kick deep. 450 Riley. left. They do exactly that. Golden, the lone deep man, and he's surrounded without any blockers. Florida State deployed 10 men up front in case there was an onside kick. And the crowd rocking again. Want to 
Dunks the screen with Travis Miner in a foot race, and Travis Miner's got the first down. Out of bounds. Travis Miner is an impressive pass receiver. Absolutely. That's his sixth catch of the night. Most of them have been behind the line of scrimmage, simple flare plays, and you can see the quickness he has after he catches it to ball, too. He just doesn't have that escapability that the Warwick Dunn, not many do, but Warwick Dunn had from that same position. They've gone airborne with two of their receivers tonight, Menace and Bolden. Bolden has caught three passes for 100 yards, Menace six balls for 70 yards, and Morgan four for 71. First down and 10. Four and a half minutes. There's the blitz. Safety blitz again. Jeremy Myers coming in there. A run blitz. Now second and nine. Ricky in trouble. Going down at the 19-yard line. Daryl Smith, number 51, rockets in. Going to have a finish to this football game. I'll tell you something else. Georgia Tech is going to have a heck of a defense by the end of this season. Oh, yeah. They're, they're much quicker. They're much better tacklers. They have a scheme they believe in. And I, I agree with Teddy Rook when he said, when I asked him, why are you better? He said, I got 770 reasons. We played all these kids last year. We've got 10 starters returning. You have to believe in that. They bit the bullet a year ago, and these guys are better. There's one of the freshmen, Daryl Smith, who's in there at this point in the game. Three young linebackers, freshman linebackers, that are playing football here tonight for Georgia Tech. Dan Winky gets 17. He'll try with Miner. Nope. Ran into his own man down at the 24. Nothing doing on that play as they didn't try to strike downfield. And now Georgia Tech with a chance. Timeout will be used here by Tech. That is their final timeout. Wow, that's surprising. Fourth they and can 20, they've stop. earned their last timeout. They can stop the clock with a first down in the college game. That changes things a lot. And, uh, well, we got a moment. Let's uh, select the Chevrolet players of the game. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university. General scholarship fund. Chris Winkie, no surprise. And Ricardo Wimbush the leaders of the tech defense here tonight. Man, let's give a, a, a medal of honor of courage to George Gatsi and a, and a big uh, slap on the back to Jermaine Crenshaw, too. Those two guys have played great football for Georgia Lair tonight. Two quarterbacks. I suppose, and I guess my question to you is, would you set a return or would you go all out with Wimbush and try to block? I would go for a return. They put this ball on the 40 yard line and coming in. Let's say they get it from their own 40 in. It's four down territory the rest of the way. I like my odds. Cottrell, an excellent punter. Glover on the run. Tough punt. Oh, it hit him. It hit Clark. Clark. Right. And Glover has to dive on it to save it. Jamara Clark yeah. let the punt hit him, and there was a free ball over there for a moment. I, I, I hate one guy back in that situation. It cost him 20 yards. Now, why should this ball go all the way back to the 40-yard line? That's a free ball. I don't know. Well, maybe it hit the Florida That's State That's the only player. thing that could have happened if it hit Florida State guy in the leg. The only possibility. Can't all lands. You see him throw the beanbag. He caught the Florida State player being hit right here. It did right up between the legs. See the beanbag. Absolutely. That's there it is. It goes back to the spot. Right there and bring it back. All right. They're on it. So for the 40. Now remember, Godsey has completed his last 10 passes for 98 yards. A first down at the 40-yard line. Oxy with three wides. Back in the gun. Under pressure. Beautiful. Over the middle. And it is Will Glover for a first down. Across midfield with 2.29 to go. And the clock stops. 
He's now completed 11 in a row. And that's after he came off the bench last week to lead a victory against Central Florida. Two touchdowns in their last two drives. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Snaps off Myers. Nice catch by Myers. at the 41-yard line, but that's a pickup of five or six more before Ty Cody unloads. Everyone always asks me why the two-minute offense can't be used throughout the whole game. Well, one thing is you got four downs instead of three downs. That's a 33% better chance of making a first down holding. There's a hold. And there's the penalty fly. Yeah. Two of them as well. No question there was a hole. Yeah, that was young John Bennett, the freshman that time, saved his quarterback. Number 79, the right guard tackle, had to grab. And you can hear that Florida State band, that yeah. haunting theme that there's over there. A lot of Seminole fans in Atlanta for this game. And, uh, Sounds, yeah. It sounds more like a, a, a prayer instead of a haunt this time. Like, please, let's let's put these guys away. Holy offense, 10 yards, repeat the down. Well, that's a still a Legitimate shot to pick up this first down. Remember, four down territory, two minutes to go. Second down and 15. Dotsie's on his best passing roll of the game here late. And he's got another one. This time it's Burns, short of the first down. Not out of bounds. Clock continues to run. Georgia Tech needs to hurry it up here. Third down and two. Need the first down to stop the clock. From the gun, here comes the all-out blitz. No, incomplete, but that stops the clock at the 135 mark. But here comes the fourth down and two. Mickey Andrews brought, brought the whole blitz that time, brought the whole package. Now, what do you do on fourth and two? Do you bring them again? What if you're Ralph Friedman? What are you guessing? You got to give your quarterback some options. Quick slant. I like I, I like going to Myers. He's really, really dependable catching the football. He had completed 13 in a row until that. Needs a couple. Here comes the heat. No oh, interference. I don't see the fly. Oh, I'm asking for it. He pumped right into it. Watkins, the intended receiver, at the 35-yard line. Samuels, the Florida State defender number 10 right there. Samuels is a freshman, made the play. Right over the middle of the field, ball's on the way. Does he get there? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely gets there. I, my first impression was there was interference, and it, it just, that should be called. Oh, oh that was... I, it was That's late. A horrible yeah. call. Horrible call. He remember, collided with the ball coming right at him. Absolutely. And that gives Georgia Tech, remember, four more cracks at a first down. And so now Winky, knowing that Georgia Tech cannot stop the clock. That's unbelievable. Takes a knee and uh I hate to Mom see this and Top game. are relieved. I mean, uh, yeah. this has been a tough one for the uh for the Winky family, even though their son broke the all-time Florida State passing. Marks here tonight with 443 yards and two touchdowns. He was 25 of 38. And uh, I think Florida State is going to breathe a huge sigh of relief when they walk off this field. They got more than they bargained for here tonight. This is very similar, very similar to the Clemson game a year ago. They survived it. Five weeks ago, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks from now, if Florida State keeps winning, nobody will remember this. But if they start to slip again, this will be brought up. Good coach, George O'Leary. Oh, absolutely. Does a good job. This team's going to be tough to deal with a little bit later in the season. That's a shocking call at the end of the game. That's, I hate to see one of those calls determine an outcome of a game, but it, when you're in a two-minute drill, that, that really could have caused the difference of this football game. Yeah. Takes another one. We run down the sands of time, and Florida State's winning streak now goes to 14 the longest in the nation 
as Marshall was beaten today by Michigan State. But it didn't come easy here tonight for the Knowles, who came into this game favored by 22 and get out a winner by five. I mean, they just do get out of town. So that's our final score Florida State 26.